All right. Welcome to the Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 9th of April, 2021. Um, agenda item review, proposed to review the open action items. Uh, we had a discussion on Java 11 as default in all our images with Alex not here. I'd like to talk to that one so that we, we continue the discussion. Then we've got pending changes to Docker images that needs some further discussion, I think. Uh, securing the delivery pipeline. Gareth, I think this is one where some question and answer discussion with you on your current experiences and um, would be a big help. And then security scanning, just a status report. Anything else that needs to go on the agenda? Okay. All right, so I've got the action item still to do the Docker operating system, Jeff. There is a discussion right now testing the idea, and I like that. It, there's a PR where a user has proposed um, an Arch image, so an Arch Linux image, and answered uh, Alex's question, would you be willing to maintain it? With yes, I'm willing to maintain it. And so that one needs more evaluation. And then we need to decide how we, how we put that person as a code owner over, uh, over that particular thing, et cetera. Plugin installation manager. Um, Gareth and I were just discussing, there are some additional enhancements there. And this is becoming more and more widely used. Uh, it's standard documentation. Uh, and, and it really does belong in the documentation. There's so many good things we can do with plugin installation manager tool. Okay, we had multi-arch CI for S390 and PowerPC, and we've got ARM64 already running, no status that I've got there, and I've still got the roadmap image, roadmap changes responsibility. Next topic then was Java 11 in our default images. So this one, there is continuing discussion. Should we consider doing a Jenkins 3 release in September, make a major change? The discussion will continue happening in the, in the mailing lists. And at that point, the idea was, should we make Java 11 the standard everywhere or even before that? Just make it the default everywhere. And if you want Java 8, it takes a little more work. I suppose the, the, one of the issues is around the, 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 the labels on the Docker images, um, because you'll be changing the, you know, the, the one that's just called LTS will jump from Java 8 to Java 11, won't it? Exactly, right. And, and the way we handled that the last time was we just announced we're, we're changing from Debian stretch to Buster, you know, from Debian 9 to 10. We announced it as a blog post and the contents inside the image changed. And it seems to have actually worked out okay, but we would do the same kind of thing where we would just use a blog post announcement. Hey, the, the base Java version that's running inside this is switching from eight to 11. So I think this would have a lot more impact than probably switching there. Oh, now I'm interested. Tell me more about what are some of the areas where you would expect impact. So there was com there was conversations with Oleg around um, running agents and running um, controllers with different JDK versions and how they uh -huh. it's not it's not a recommended thing. Um, so I think that that would it would be a, it, it could cause I suppose it could cause issues, but I suppose as long as there is a a JDK eight variant that people can switch back to. But yeah, then that's probably okay. I know that it's where they switch to JDK 11 automatically in the Helm chart. So if you upgrade to the latest version of Helm chart, you will get a JDK 11. Oh, already? Yes, but you, yeah, that, oh, that already gone in. Ah, oh, Tim, that's Tim, good, Tim okay. Did, Tim did that about, about a week ago. I think it was the, I think that was the, the 3.3.0 release, um, I think. 
Okay, that's that's great because that says we've got more and more people who will be using, and those people tend to be our leading edge people anyway. If you're using the Helm chart, you're you're based on very modern code. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And that there was no no you haven't heard any uproar, any noise, any loud shouting about hey you broke me. No more than usual. Good, very good. That's encouraging. <laughs> well, yeah. That's really believe, great. Yeah, I'll just check the help. Like, see if there's any issues on the home chart repo, but I, just, I haven't, I haven't seen anything. Um, yeah, no, no, not 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 that I can tell. Um, you know, within the past week or so, so that's fine. I mean. If one of the things with the Helm chart, because you're kind of recommended to create your own image anyway, you may well find that people are doing that. Ah, right. Okay. So they, if if they're using, but if they're using, oh, if they're using their own image, then the they've modified the Helm chart then to, or parameterized the Helm chart to use their image name. Yeah, the, I mean the Helm chart's already parameterized, so you ah. just you just supply you just supply like a, a new tag in your values YAML. Um, and it will it will pick up the new or the your sort of custom image. Okay. Interesting. All right. Anything else on Java eleven in, as default? Are there places as I'm thinking about? It, are there places we could add Java eleven as default already? We've done it in the documentation already. We've, but for instance, I wonder if we we should consider changing the if I remember right, the operating system install packages already take whatever Java you have. So, so they, they don't mandate a particular Java, but we could guide users and say, hey, you should install Java 11 rather than Java 8 on your Debian or your Ubuntu or your CentOS or Red Hat. Yeah. That's a good one. Let me make a note of that. Mark to update docs to recommend Java 11 even on our on OS OS platforms. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. Anything else there? Okay, so multiple Docker changes. Um, these have been somewhat on hold for me as I've had to focus on other things. I think the most interesting one is this replacement of install plugins.sh with plugin installation manager accompanied by documentation, better documentation to support it. So that it'd be a good thing to merge um, about the same time or when we provide the new documentation. Gareth, anything else that I that you're aware of on any of those topics? No, I know that um, Damien has been working on a plugin library to allow um, easier building of like monorepo style Docker images, um, which which is one of the things that was kind of holding up uh, a lot of these. Um, I think it's the non-root user part. Ah, um, and, good. Okay. And, and, the, and, and those changes. So I think because because it was actually we wanted to use we wanted to have all the features of the plugin library, but the plugin library assumes one Docker file in the root normally. Um, per repo to do its tagging and everything like that. But actually what we want to do is build multiple images from the same repository. So he's he's been experimenting with ways that we can get it to do that. Excellent, okay, good. All right, then securing the Jenkins delivery pipeline. Gareth, this is the one, share with us some of the things you're, you're seeing as you're experimenting with JEP229 yeah, so it it all in all, it's been it, it's a much nicer um, release process than what we've we've currently had or what we've previously had. Um, I guess especially for plugins that 
I used to maintain and like I don't know where my credentials or information like trying to release it from my local machine and having it set up is something that I always forget about so having like a single place where you can do it automatically on a interesting commit is really useful um yeah it's really handy uh some of the kind of enhancements that we've been looking at on some plugins are around uh, rather than using the generated build number which you've got an example of that at 820.bab something or other because that's not semantic that's not a semantic version um, is to use uh, jx release version to determine the next semantic version for you automatically and we've had some good success with that And it now JX release version generates, it computes the next version based on current version. So, so it's yeah. it's doing and and based on contents of the the log. Tell tell share more. Aditya may not have, have heard before of how this thing works, and it would help for for the recording, etc. I mean, yeah, sure. So um, it 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 tries to determine the latest tag that's already there. And it uses that as a starting point. Um, and it will then look at the commits that have been added since um, that tag and where you're currently at. And it will then calculate what the version bump should be based on the conventional commit um, sort of stuff. Um, yeah, conventional commits format. So it, it is a JX plugin, it is a Golang binary, so you need to run it in a, um, a set container or bundle it in somehow. So it's, it's, yeah, it's not quite Jenkins native yet, but it, it's pretty good. So, and, and it was increment the major version if it's a breaking change, increment the minor version if it's a feature? feature. Is that right? Yeah. Okay and increment the patch version otherwise. Yeah. And so the example there for my benefit is 1.x.y becomes 2.0.0. .0 yeah. And then this one, it'd be 1.1.0. X becomes 1.2.0. And this one is 1.1.1 becomes 1.1.2. Yep. Cool. And, and, and just using that, that sort of versioning scheme means that when you're looking at plugins in either in the, the plugin installation manager or the, the, the manage Jenkins interface, you can actually and to see what the changes are, you, you get straight away. You can say, oh, I'm fairly close to this plugin rather than, I don't know, build 820 jumping to build 824 with a random chart at the end. I, I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. Um, right. I don't know what that means, yeah. Yeah, it lets me infer the distance from uh, an upgrade is covering, right? So if, yeah. if previously it was 1.x and now it's 2, I know, oh, that's a bigger distance than 1.1.1 going to 1.2, right? Yeah. Excellent. Good. Thank you. Any, any insights there you want to share? I assume we keep talking about it and share more. I assume eventually we do it, want a blog post on it or a discussion in some location about, hey, here's this additional refinement to, to JEP 229 that will allow us to use semantic versioning uh, thanks to, and you, you, you described it, it was conventional yeah, I mean, commits. I think we need, I think we probably need, for JEP 229, we probably need more of a guide on how you can upgrade to that for your existing plugins. So like we and try and explain the options that are available. I think I think that the 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 JEP proposed there's a lot of information on the JEP proposal, but I think it means that people will miss stuff and they won't quite 
find out what they need to know. Right. Okay. Which, 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 I mean, we've done developer online meetups before for these kinds of things. This might be a great one to do a developer online meetup to say, look, here's how you can improve your development process as a plugin developer. Life gets yeah. simpler if you'll do this. And here is this tool that will help you do that. Yeah, we probably need a, a like a proper a, a proper pages on the you know, mm -hmm. linked from the um, the plugin developer part of Jenkins.io. Right. Um, so that it, it you know it can be searched and is indexed with with a link to the recording of the online meetup or something like that. That would be that would be really handy. Right. Okay. Good. Excellent. Anything else you wanted to share in, on that? No, that's good. Okay. Last topic was just the security scanning of our Jenkins images and, and actually not just images and binaries. So Oleg's working with and discussing with the Linux Foundation on improve, possible improvements to the scanning interface that they provide. They provide a scanning service. Um, there are some gaps in it and he's working to see what we can do to help those gaps. Any other topics before we close our meeting today? All right, thanks everybody. We will meet again in two weeks. Cheers. Bye.